As far as self-defense goes, I've never had to pull the trigger on a human being, but I have had to defend myself against dogs three times. Thank you for joining us on today's active self-protection lesson. I'm your host, John Correa. Today's video comes to us from Colorado Springs, Colorado in the United States. Today's video is brought to you by the generosity of Newbold targets. Newbold targets are self-sealing reactive polymer targets that act like steel targets for training and practice, but are safer than steel. They allow bullets to pass completely through the target without ricochet or lead splatter. Check out their links in the description and thank them for bringing us today's video. It's a Sunday afternoon. You see this family heading to their car after church and they're leaving in the church parking lot. The parking lot's pretty empty. Looks like they're one of the last out. Now notice coming from the top of the screen, the dog that's running off leash. When you see mama with a little girl come in and the dog's just gonna run right up to the little girl and attack her, grab a hold of her on her left arm. And now mom and dad are gonna have to do everything they can to get this dog off of her. We're gonna see it in, as we get up to here in a minute, dad's gonna finally pick that dog up with some bystanders who are coming over to help as well. Dad's now gonna reach into his pocket and is going to pull out a defensive folding knife, finally get that defensive folder open, get after that dog enough to make it let go. And now they're gonna get that little girl out of there. He's actually gonna get after the dog a little bit more. Dog's gonna run off. The owner was actually charged with owning a dangerous animal and the dog was euthanized. A uh, little girl had puncture wounds to her arm and her bicep and she is going to make a full recovery, but she did need some significant medical attention. Boy, serious stuff. I got a question for you out of this one. I'm wondering how prevalent it is among the fans of active self-protection to have to defend yourself against a dog attack. If, have you ever had to do that? Let me know a comment in the description. We'll put a poll up too. Have you ever had to defend yourself against a dog? My answer is yes, three times. Thankfully, never had to actually press the trigger. Have used those C spray twice. Was able to talk another dog down, but I wanna hear from you. Let's think about other lessons out of this one. So first of all, this is the first use of a defensive folding knife that I have ever seen caught on camera. And it reminds me to carry your tools on you at all time. Yes, even at church. Now I would recommend more than a pocket knife at church. I carry my OC spray and a firearm. And I think actually at various times, as we'll talk about, they would have been much better choices here than a defensive folding knife. But carry your tools with you friends. So then that way you're ready no matter where you are, whether that's at church or somewhere else. Now, as they are coming out here, I do notice it's super windy. And of course that's just gonna make a lot of things harder. But notice here that we have a dog off leash. Okay, fine, and I notice dad is looking around, but look at how fast this guy comes at them. This dog is gonna close that distance very, very quickly. And yes, paying attention buys you time and time buys you options. Now you can't look all over the place all at once, but if you are just paying attention to your world, you see that kind of motion with that dog running around, then you might have had some opportunity to go, oh no, I'm gonna get something out here. And again, if you know a pepper spray in this much wind may not have been a great idea, but certainly an advancing dog like that would have been a pretty serious concern for anybody. But dad isn't gonna be able to see that dog real very quickly. You notice as we uh, zoom in here, that he only finally gets this dog in his attention window when the dog is maybe you know seven or eight or 10 feet from him. And that's not a lot of time because that dog is coming at a fast jog. So he has literally a split second to make a decision about whether this dog is aggressive or not. And I don't think that's enough time for him to do that, friends, which is why we always say the farther away you can see a threat, the more chance you have to respond appropriately. There's nothing dad's gonna do in the moment. Mom either really in that matter other than put herself between the dog and her daughter. Now you notice there, she tried to do exactly that, but the dog just went right around and attacks your child. So of course we wanna prevent these kinds of attacks if we can but now we actually are in an attack in that moment and so now we have to decide what is it we are going to do and we have to fight back our child depends on it our child's life depends on it because that dog is just about as big as that child a lot stronger than the child and can absolutely kill that child in a minute this child is right now in imminent threat of death or great bodily injury. Now notice here that mom is trying to pull the child away. And I know that our first inclination is, oh, there's, you know, I get this child up and away from this lower dog. But pulling on your child like that actually encourages the dog to bite harder and to rip harder. You wanna go and attack that dog and attack the problem, not try to pull yourself away. And I know that's counterintuitive because we wanna pull away from danger, but when you pull away from a biting dog like that, it actually engages their instincts to rip and to you know, uh, shake their head about and to rip flesh off. And so you'd really wanna hold off doing that if at all possible, though I see how exactly hard that would be. 
Next thing I want to notice is you notice dad still got a hold of his Bible. He's still got a hold of his stuff in his hands. And you got to learn when it's defense time, I don't care about anything else that's going on in my world. If it's my Bible, my laptop, my cell phone, it goes out of my hands so that I can use everything that I have available to defend myself and my loved ones. Training yourself to drop what's in your hand does take a little bit of work. You should do that on the range with your firearm skills. Do that even on the mats with uh, you know your empty handed skills training. Learn how to, oh, hey man, I got problems. Drop what's in my hands. So then that way you do it in real life. Dad is eventually going to do that. And you notice here that he finally has a hold of the dog. Now I have to say, I think in this instance, had he been armed with a firearm, this was probably his best opportunity to use it because you can see he's got himself a place where he can relatively get a safe shot on this dog. Although I will say at any time if he had drawn a firearm and used it on this dog, it would have been incredibly difficult because of the, the real dynamic nature of what his backstop would look like, which is another great reason to have really good jacketed hollow point rounds in your firearm. He finally does a good thing here and gets this dog picked up. If you're going to attack that dog, guess what? A dog is susceptible to things like a rear naked choke. If you can choke that dog, they will start to let go. Eventually, now not immediately, but if you can get a good choke on that dog, the dog will start to let go. Another reason to have a high level of empty handed skills training. And at least when you get him up off the ground, that dog will start thinking about something else other than biting and ripping and chewing. And this is an effective strategy and it does start to work here. Now notice that the bystanders are coming to help out. That's great, but look at how hard that is. Now notice now is that dad is trying to go get his pocket knife. So we're gonna say here, how long does it take him to get his defensive folding knife out? And when you time it from when he first starts going to the knife to when he actually employs it, it's about six and a half seconds. You have to have incredible positional dominance to get a defensive folding knife out and open. And this is one of the reasons that I actually don't really consider carrying a folding knife a good defensive choice because it takes him so long to get this knife out that it is functionally useless in this case. It will work eventually because of all the help that he had. But boy, if you're gonna carry a knife or a force multiplier at all, you gotta get it out quickly. When he finally does get it out, you see him jab underneath and finally get that dog. And yes, that was dangerous to everybody there too because backstops changed so fast. He had good positional dominance to get a good jab in on that dog and that finally made the dog let go. The faster you can do that, the faster the threat and the less damage is done to your little one. And then you notice that he keeps that out, gets himself a little space when the dog gets off of her because he's going to be highly dangerous and could be aggressive towards anybody else around. The one suggestion I would have, do the best you can to get between yourself, you know, get yourself between your loved ones and that aggressive dog. Now, this guy's gonna try to hold that dog down and he's gonna give it one last stab when it comes his way. And again, another limitation of a defensive folding knife, incredibly short range. And, and I would far rather in this instance, again, a pepper spray would be a good choice, although in the very windy conditions that we have out in this particular incident, I don't know that it would have been very useful, but a firearm would have been an acceptable tool in this instance, but you'd have to be very careful with your backstop. Now, once that dog runs off, okay, fine. Now you've got to change and start looking at your loved ones and get your medical stuff moving. This little girl has puncture wounds in her arms, several of them, and she has been chewed up bad. This is one of the big reasons you wanna have your first aid kit and first aid skills on your person at all times because you wanna be able to stop that bleeding and get her to the hospital very quickly. Again, they were able to do that in this case, but having that major traumatic blood loss training is incredibly important, so please hear me get at least to a stop the bleed class, if not something even more significant than that, so that you can protect your loved ones. First time I've ever seen a defensive folding knife used in a defensive context. I don't really recommend them, and this is kind of why, but it did work eventually. And thankfully this dad did have his tools on him and did have an attitude to protect his family and finally covered their ass.